North America, about one third of all the food bought by our household ends up fitting the dumpster. Taking into account restaurants and supermarkets, about 133 billion pounds of organic matter are buried across the dump sites in the US every year. So see, here's what currently happens with your food waste. Every week or two, the garbage truck comes to your neighborhood, picks up the trash, and drives miles and miles to the nearest dump site. It then empties everything on top of the pile. A bulldozer then flattens the waste to optimize the space, and everything is ready for the next delivery. Pretty simple, right? Well, maybe too simple. See, the thing is, this is terrible for global warming. The layer of garbage and usually soil that covers it creates a system in absence of oxygen for the organic waste to decompose. And as some of you probably know, in absence of oxygen, organic waste decomposes into methane, or CH4, a gas with a global warming potential 25 times stronger than CO2, which is the gas mainly produced when they decompose with plenty of oxygen to react with. So, if it's that bad, why are we doing this? The thing is, we produce a lot of waste, and our dump sites are relatively small spaces compared to the amount of waste we produce, and we're just pretty much forced to. So, what if we could do something different? Something better. Here comes into play biomethanation. Now, don't be fooled by the long word. It's actually a pretty simple process. It simply consists of reproducing the natural reaction of decomposing organic waste in absence of oxygen and thus producing methane, but this time in a controlled environment, like a lab or a factory, to collect the resulting biogas. This biogas can then be used to produce heat or electricity, or can be upgraded to biomethane and used to fuel cars, trucks, boats, etc. So how does it work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All you need to do is blend your organic matter. So let's say last night's leftovers. You mix it with a suitable living habitat for bacteria, aka manure, suck out the oxygen and replace it by nitrogen, and let the bacteria do the hard work for, the hard work for 30 days. At a small lab scale, it looks like something like this. Oh, and by the way, the bottle should be more than half full, otherwise they could explode under the pressure and you definitely don't want that to happen, especially considering what's inside. <laughs> so that's, that's a big picture. It's a bit more complex, but you, you get the main picture. And in biomethanation, we have what we call the biochemical methane potential, which is, roughly speaking, simply the number of liters of biogas that can be produced per ton of organic matter. And this potential, varies depending on the composition of the reactant in terms of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. The reason for this is methane is a gas mainly made of carbon, C. And thus, when you decompose organic waste, the more carbons, atoms, the organic waste um, has in it, well, the higher the BMP will be, the higher the quantity of methane will be and thus lipids, which are huge organic molecules made of a lot and a lot of carbon atoms, will have a much higher BMP. Therefore, if you're using leftovers that are rich in lipids or fat, you're going to produce much, much more methane. So now the idea is pretty simple. Why should we spend a lot of money collecting and dumping organic wastes well, we could use the same exact money and simply carry it to biomethanation factories and use it to produce biogas and thus optimizing our, our waste. See, that's the question I asked myself a little more than a year ago. And in fact, I wanted to know which were the diets that we should use to do that. So it led me to evaluate the BMP, the biochemical methane potential, of three widespread diets. The North American diet, the vegetarian diet, and the Mediterranean diet thinking that with this data, we could evaluate where it would be more efficient to build factories and labs. So after two and a half, three months, here's what I came up with. As you can see, the Mediterranean diet has the highest BMP, although shortly followed by the North American diet. And if we think of it, it makes perfect sense. Those two diets are known for being really, really rich in lipids and proteins in comparison to the vegetarian diet. It is thus really <clears throat> obvious that they would produce more methane. And since the Mediterranean diet has a better carbon to nitrogen ratio, it produces more biomethane than uh, the North American diet. But we'll leave that to chemists. What really matters is not the 
actual numbers, but rather the order of magnitude that we observe. So we have data. Now what? Well, when I first started working on biomethanation, I wanted to know if it made sense environmentally, of course, to consider building biomethanation factories, but also if it made sense logistically and economically. And with this data, it turns out the answer is yes. If you recall, there are about 133 billion pounds of organic matter wasted every year in the US. Considering most of this food waste could be classified as North American diet, it would account to billions and billions of liters of biomethane, which can be used to fuel thousands and thousands of cars and trucks. Because the thing is, you only need one million cubic meter or liters of biomethane to fuel 10 heavy trucks traveling 100,000 kilometers each. You, running on biomethane produces 95% less greenhouse gases, and it is much, much greener than regular gasoline, but also 90% less particulate matter. Furthermore, running on biomethane produces 50% less nitrogen oxides and is 90% less noisy than actual diesel engines. Running on biomethane would allow us to fuel thousands of trucks while efficiently depolluting. Because the thing is, burning one molecule of methane produces one molecule of CO2. And since methane has a global warming potential 25 times stronger than CO2, it's better burning it than actually leaving it be in nature. Therefore, it makes biomethane a fuel with a net negative global warming potential. So, it looks pretty much, it, it looks nice on paper. But is it actually feasible? Could we, could we build those factories and change our cars? Well, we most likely could. All we need to do now is build huge biomethanation factories next to the main dump sites. We could then have the same exact truck that's coming to your neighborhood every week or two to pick up your trash or your recycling, come another day in the week, and this time pick up your organic waste. We could provide households with a new bin only for their organic waste. You don't even need a new transportation system. You already have one perfectly working. You have the trucks, you have the roads. All you need to do is come another day in the week. Could our cars use biogas? They could, because the thing is, uh, biomethane is also a combustible f um, fuel. Therefore, you only need to adapt your regular gasoline car to run on biomethane. Regular cars and small trucks could be adapted to fuel, uh, to use compressed natural gas as a fuel, while heavier cars and trucks could use liquefied natural gas as a fuel. And furthermore, since biomethane is cheaper than gasoline, the, ad the adaptation kit would repay itself over the years. Because the thing is, biomethanation produces biomethane, and this biomethane is not only more eco-friendly than gasoline, it's also cheaper, costing anywhere between 35 cents to $2.10 per gallon, depending on the global market and the availability. Now, speaking of money, is this process uh, feasible in terms of money? Could we build those factories and run them? Well, the thing is, when you have a business, you need to pay for your raw materials and to transport them back and forth to your factories. With biomethanation, you don't even need to pay for those two things, because people are really paying for someone to get rid of the garbages for them, right? So not only do you have free raw material, but you also have an already financed transportation system. Therefore, once the factory is built, all you need to do is keep it running, which is much, much cheaper than a lot of other businesses. Therefore, we could produce billions and billions of dollars in uh, biogas, which would help making it even more available and affordable than it already is. The excess of money could even be used to uh, help households reduce the cost of garbage disposal, which would motivate them to carefully separate their organic waste from their non-organic waste, thus optimizing the process in factories. And it's also important to point the fact that it would create a lot of great jobs, not only in the US, but also around the world. We could think of biologists, chemists, lab technicians, and all the employees used in running those factories. And when I say around the world, you need to recall that Mediterranean diet was actually better than the North American one. 
So we could think of Europe as a great place to build biomethanation factories. And a lot of other studies should be done to evaluate the biomethane potential of many other diets to spread the technology around the world. So you might be thinking, if it's, if it's that good, if it's so feasible and it's, it's so easy, why isn't it everywhere already, right? Well, the thing is, albeit being a fairly whole technology, biomethanation is, uh, has been mostly maintained to an agricultural purpose so far. In Germany, they have, roughly speaking, about 9,000 biogas plants. And in the US, we have about 2,000 2, wastewater biogas plants. However, all of these are on a farm, our farms and are really agricultural scale. What's new here is biomethanation with citizen waste, which is more complex and often polluted with plastics and other garbages. However, projects of this kind are starting to emerge in Germany, France, Canada, and many more. So, <clears throat> if it's so great, why should we do it instead of electric cars? Because electric cars are great too. Well, the thing is, electric cars cost a lot more than biogas. To adapt your, your car, your, your everyday car, to biogas, it would cost about 5,000 US dollars, which is much, much, much cheaper than the cheapest electric car on the market. Biomethanation, or CNG cars, could therefore empower more and more people to actually change their actual transportation system to a more eco-friendly mean of transportation, and thus share the road with electric cars over the years to come. So what, what do we need to actually do that? Political support is a thing. Citizen awareness and, of course, a global market for biogas are key elements to making it profitable, affordable, and well-established in our sustainable society of tomorrow. So why does it matter? Why should we spend money and energy on this technology? Well, climate change. See, climate change is often regarded as a problem that is impossible to solve. It's an overwhelming problem that would require a miracle, right? But sometimes you already have all the pieces you need to make this miracle happen. You simply need to make a better use of the resources available to you. And biomethanation is a concrete proof of this reality. Now, don't get me wrong. Biomethanation will not end global warming. Far from it. And it will definitely take many, many, many years or decades to fully establish around the world. Yet, it might take a few less years with your help. Right now, there are a few organisms trying to expand biomethanation around the world. In Canada, they have Biogas World and the Canadian Biogas Association. In the US, we have the American Biogas Council. And in Europe, Germany has Erdgas and France has France Biomethane, both of which are regulated by the European Biogas Association. So what could you do? First of all, support these organizations. Anything from spreading the word to donating money or converting your car to biogas, every action counts. Second, demand the better waste disposal system. You deserve it, and your children or future children deserve it. See, biogas is not only a more eco-friendly fuel, it's also a cheaper one, so there's really no reason not to demand it. And while you're at it, why not simply try to waste less food or compost whenever you can? Now, you might be thinking that this is not for you, that someone else will do it. Well, if you're thinking that, think twice. Every single person has a role to play in making our world slightly better every day. Because the thing is, we might not share the same culture or beliefs, the same passions or interests, or even the same goals or ambitions, but there's something we all have in common. We share the same world, our world, so let's not forget to share with the next generations. Thank you.